Hey, Daryl, just wanted to leave my testimony for you as a Gentile uh, believer in Yeshua, Hamashiach, that um, I came to the understanding that the descendants of the transatlantic slave trade and probably some indigenous um, African Americans here that were here beforehand, I think might might be some of the lost tribes of Israel who were here when uh, when Columbus got here, that uh, understanding that you guys are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible that people around the world uh, understand as uh, descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. My testimony is about three years ago in December, I was reading the book of Revelation. Uh, as, as you know, it's the only book in the Bible that promises a blessing to those who, who read it, and it turned out to be true f- for me. Um, I was in chapter 4 and uh, verse 3, and he that sat on the throne was to look like a s- jasper and sardine stone. And there was a rainbow around the throne in the sight like unto an emerald. When I saw jasper and sardine stone, uh, I looked those stones up, and uh, the color of them was basically like a, a, a black man's skin. And then I turned back thinking of what Revelation 13 and 14, 1, 13 and 14 say. His head and hair were like wool. Of course, we know what uh, African Americans' hair is like. It's like wool. White as snow, his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet were like unto fine brass as if it had been burned in a furnace. And so obviously we know what color that is. So uh, that's when I realized that Jesus Christ was a black man, and but I didn't put two and two together about uh, his descendants uh, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, who the entire Old Testament and the New Testament, and uh, Jesus speaks about it in Luke 21, 24, that uh, there's going to be a time period where the Gentiles take over. And uh, at the end times, the Hebrew Israelites are going to wake up. They're going to come to themselves. They're going to remember who they are. And uh, they're going to start coming back to Yah and his commands. And when they do, that is when the second exodus takes place and Jesus' return happens. So uh, it was a it was a big so so. I accepted that Jesus was black based on the Bible itself. And a little more about my my story. I went to a fair and uh, recently after discovering this and, and there was some IUIC gentleman there in the purple and gold. And I almost had an opportunity to go up to him and say, I, I believe Jesus is black too. I didn't get the chance to speak to them, but I got home and I just looked up on YouTube you know, gold and purple, uh, black uh, Hebrews, and found somebody. I got his number. I called him, and because I wanted to fellowship with a Hebrew Israelite, and uh, that was when I learned about the camp doctrine of white people can't be saved. Uh, it didn't deter me at all. In fact, uh, later on, listening to some Hebrew Israelite teachers, I think Apostle Curtis Lewis brought this up that uh, Jesus Himself said that many will be offended uh, when they come to the realization their identity has been stolen from them. So I don't blame uh, them at all. I think the teaching is wrong that Gentiles can't be saved, but I also think the teaching is wrong that it doesn't matter who the Hebrew Israelites are. It doesn't matter what color Jesus Christ's skin is, because it also says that uh, in in those later days and in that day and at that time that people are going to see the descendants of uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and know who they are based on their appearance. And many will come to the Jews and will say, I hear Yah is with you. And they, there will be 10 Gentiles to every one Jew who will grab the hem. And as we kind of enter into these times, understanding who the real Israelites are, uh, I think it's more important than ever that Gentiles um, accept God's chosen people who were the Israelites and that we got grafted in because of their unbelief, but don't boast against natural branches. I just think it's so important to take the the Bible, the word of God seriously. And in most cases, just believe what it says. It always tells you if it's it's speaking in a parable or an allegory. Uh, But when it speaks outrightly and directly, I would just suggest that 
my fellow Gentiles, uh, take heed to what it says. And we can talk about this more when, when, when we, when we talk, talk on your podcast, but uh, I've gained a lot of, um, I gained a lot from, from learning from born again, Hebrew Israelites, like, like apostle Curtis, like yourself, uh, like other YouTube channels, the gates of Hulda would be one of them. Um, Benaya Israel, we woke now with pastor Kelly. Uh, there's just a lot of great Bible teachers who teach the Bible in context that I don't think most of the Gentile churches are getting nowadays. The 501 C threes that are real, maybe programmatic in their, in their teaching style. Well, they'll just teach on a couple of verses and, and, uh, and tell personal stories rather than really digging into the Bible. What does it say about the Hebrew Israelites, the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the last days? What is the plan uh, of redemption? It starts making sense of a lot of verses that we can talk about um, when I'm when I'm when I'm with you. But that's my testimony. I hope it helps, especially my fellow Gentiles, to uh, to understand that. Uh, Israel matters. Uh, when you bless Israel, uh, y you are blessed. And so I just want to say bless Israel and we'll talk soon.